In this video, I'm going over some editing tools that you might not know about. We're not only going to go over them, but at the end of this video, I'm going to rank each and every one of them. I'm going to write them down and then see which one's the most useful in my opinion. <sighs> now, my voice does sound like this because I'm currently recovering from a cold, so it's a little bit different. It's still a <coughs> healing, but that doesn't matter because we're still making a video. So let's get straight to it. Auditions. Here, let me just write it down real quick. Now, I'm not talking about a, you're trying to get a role in the movie and you're going to audition for it. No, it's feature and final cut. Now we've got this clip here, right? So clicking on this clip, if you press Alt Y or Option Y, you'll get this little, little spotlight here, audition, right? And if you click that, you'll see it made a duplicate. And so in this duplicate, I can go in, let's say in this color grade, I wanted to make it black and white. Now we got two options that we can look through if we wanted to pick and see which one's best. And that's what the audition is. Show animation. So pretty much what this does is, let's say in this clip, I wanted to add some keyframes, start off zoomed in and then have it zoomed out. You got some animation going on. If you wanted to see that animation or adjust the keyframes a part of it, and this can be done with any effect pretty much inside Final Cut, you click Control V and that will pop up all the keyframes here that you're able to adjust. So let's say I wanted to start it a little bit later. I just move this over right here. Now I will say this is very, I use this quite often. So this might be ranked up higher in the, in the ranking here. If you have any other effects on this, it will show it. And if you add any keyframes to it, you'll be able to adjust like so. So if I wanted to shorten it, be really fast like that. Attributes. What does that mean? You're about to find out. Pretty much the meaning behind attributes is if I duplicate this clip, and let's say I wanted to add an effect over it, just throw on a bunch of effects over top. Add some major, holy moly, do not recommend. But this is for the example. So let's say I wanted to move the effects from here, copy and paste it to this one, but I only wanted to copy and paste the, the noise, not the glow. If you select this, hit Command C, select the other one, and you hit Command Shift V, that will bring up the attributes of the copied clip. Like I said, I don't wanna have the glow, but I wanna have the noise a part of it. And then the, I don't want any of the transform, and I don't want to copy the audio. And so now if we click Paste, copied over the huh, color grade. Voila, it has copied over just the film grain like so. Now, there's another part of attributes that a lot of people don't really mention when they talk about pasting attributes. There's a way that you can remove specific attributes. It's useful if you wanna select a lot of clips and remove the same effect. You wanna click Command Shift X instead. And so we want to deselect what we don't want removed because that's exactly what it's going to be doing. And so I don't want it to remove the color glow and the color grade. So we'll just remove the noise volume and the transform. And so if you click remove, you just get the glow. Disable magnetic timeline. What does that mean? Well, as you can see here, we've got this connected through the magnetic timeline. So if I move this across, it's connected with it. And when you have a lot of footage or adjustment layers over top, they're all connected. So let's say you want to remove that and disable that. Well, if you hold the tilde key, it looks like this. You'll get this little orange bubble. You wanna grab the clip that you wanna move with the tilde key on and you're able to move it over without the top clip moving with it, which can be useful in some cases. Not too much, but it's cool to know. Also talking about the magnetic timeline, let's talk about connection points. So this right here is a connection point. Like I said, it's part of the magnetic timeline. And so let's say it's in an awkward spot and you wanna move it to another clip. Here, let's 
let's duplicate that one. Let's say we wanna move this to be over here, which is actually pretty useful sometimes if you want it to all be connected to the same area. So if you need to move that area, it's pretty easy to just move the whole section. And then you wanna click on the clip, and then you wanna, cl and then you wanna click on the clip in the area that you want the connection point to move. So for instance, it's this area. And so hold down Command Alt and click. And then like that, the connection point is moved, which again, I do use a lot because it's good to have what you want attached to that layer attached to it. Optical flow, which is a feature that is applied whenever you put the clip in super slow motion, more than the frame rate was supposed to be. Let's say I bring this down, let's make it 10%. And so it's a lot slower than the frame rate that it was filmed in, which gives it this choppy look. So let's say we want to blend the frames together and make it all flow together really nice. Well, there's this feature, optical flow. If you go into video quality, and you go down here and click optical flow, it will analyze, analyzing, just like that, it's rendered. So if we play it back, you get this super slow blended together type of look. That's really useful and I use it all the time actually. And that's how, if you've seen any of my edits and it's really slow and it seems really blended together, uh, that's what happens with that. It's not all uh, motion blur when it comes to the really slow stuff. Uh, it's optical flow. Oh, wait, forgot to write this one down. And lastly, to end this off, we're going to snapshot. It's like duplicating a clip, but it's better. For example, let's say we made a compound clip in this first project and inside that compound clip we decide to change the colors up a little bit make it a little bit crazy so if we decide to duplicate the project let's say the client had some changes and you don't fully want to get rid of it because they might want to go back and add the stuff afterwards and you don't want to have to re-add all the effects and do all that kind of stuff let's say you just duplicate the project if we change anything in this compound clip say move it to make it blue instead of green and we go back it will do the same exact thing in the duplicate and so what's the point of making a duplicate to save the effects of what may be changed whenever you change it in the original project it also does it in the duplicate doesn't really make any sense and so for this the best thing to do is to click snapshot Pretty much what that is, is it freezes the project where it's at and everything inside of it as a duplicate and anything you do in other projects won't affect any of it inside of the snapshot. And so if we go inside here again and go into the compound clip and change this back, we go to the snapshot, doesn't change. So that's really helpful, especially if you have clients that are kind of bipolar that just don't really know what they want fully so they'll make changes and then they'll want to bring it back so instead of having to re-add all the stuff that you took away you can just go into the snapshot and work off from there or you can copy and paste from the snapshot uh, back into your original project and so without further ado let's get to ranking so i got them all written down here and I'm just gonna put the number of the ranking that I think it is. In my personal opinion, with how much I've worked on them, I'm just gonna rank them that way. And so starting from the top, auditions. Urgh. In my personal opinion, I will probably rank this at just through me using and editing. I haven't really had a need to use it, and that might be an issue for me, there might be something that's more convenient by using that. Just as of now, I don't use it that much. So I'm gonna rank that in number seven. So I would say number six would probably be disable the magnetic timeline. Because although it is a pretty cool feature to know, I don't find myself using it that often. <sighs> so number five. <sighs> 
This is actually a little difficult because I use the rest of these quite often. I'll say number five, I'll say is gonna to go to connection points because whenever you drag over the clip, somewhat rare occasions, you'll need to move the connection point if you haven't dragged it over because if you drag over the adjustment layers on top of the clip, it's already linked to that. And so in some occasions, you'll just want to adjust that connection point. So I'll put it at number five and I believe I know how the rest are going to go. I'm gonna say number four is going to be snapshot. Number four is snapshot. Number three is show animation. Number two is optical flow. And number one is attributes. And so that's pretty much the ranking. That's how it is by how much I use these and the importance they are to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you knew these or not. If you didn't, well, now you know. So if you'd like to see me using some of these, maybe you can catch it. It's super fast, but I have a editing session where I work on videos from scratch. If you want to see the product of using some of these, you can watch an edit breakdown that I have. And with that being said, I'll see you at the next edit. <clears throat> Hopefully I won't be as, you know, sick.